In this video, we're going to look at the wiring of the SLC devices in the sprinkler room in the basement. I'm not going to go through the whole conduit run the way I did with the upper floors in the previous video. Suffice it to say that the SLC will leave the fire alarm control panel in one conduit, hit each device in sequence, and then return back to the panel in a separate conduit, maintaining at least five feet of separation between the two conduit runs wherever possible. I'd like to focus on how the different monitor modules we'll use here will connect to the various devices we need to monitor in the sprinkler room. In this room, we have several different types of valves and devices that need to be monitored by the fire alarm panel. One option to monitor the devices in this room would have been to put either a single point or dual point monitor module by each device or each pair of devices, as you see here. That would be a perfectly acceptable method of monitoring these devices and in most cases would probably be the preferred method. Another option is to utilize a 10 point monitor module that Notifier makes for our first 10 points, then a single and dual monitor module for the remaining devices. If I were designing this room, I'd probably prefer the individual modules by each device. I think it makes it a little bit easier for troubleshooting purposes because you can easily see which modules are monitoring which devices. But because I want to show how the XP10M gets wired, we're going to use that in this application. If you're not sure what a monitor module does, or are confused about any of the wiring I go through coming up here, go back and watch video 23. That video takes a closer look at monitor modules. Let's start looking at this sprinkler room at the left side of the screen where the water comes up out of the ground. As the water comes in from the city, the first thing it's going to hit is this backflow preventer. The backflow preventer allows water to flow in one direction, but not back the other way. This prevents the stagnant sprinkler water from contaminating the domestic water we drink. If you've ever seen or smelled the water that comes out of the inspector's test valves during a test, you understand why this is important. The first two valves monitored are going to be the backflow preventer OS and Y valves on either side of the backflow preventer. If either of these valves is closed, it's obviously going to prevent the entire sprinkler system from operating, so the valves need to be monitored in their open position. This is done with a monitor module and a Potter OSY SU2 valve tamper. If you're not familiar with this style of valve tamper, pause this video and do a search for Potter OSY SU. Potter made a great short video which demonstrates how these tamper switches and shutoff valves work, and their graphics are much better than mine. It's perfectly acceptable to monitor both of these valves with a single monitor module or to provide a separate module point for each individual valve. In this case, we're going to combine the two backflow preventer valves on a single monitor module. Let's look at the monitor module that's going to monitor the majority of the equipment in this room called an XP10M. Wiring these cards is very simple. We'll bring our SLC circuit from the panel or the previous device into the first terminal block on the left side of the card. Then the SLC will leave the card from the next terminals on that same block, feeding the next SLC device in line. The address is set for the first module point labeled plus zero. That means if you set the card's address to zero one using the two rotary address switches, the first point labeled plus zero would be one, the point labeled plus one would be two, etc. There are a few other options with this card using the jumpers circled here. Instead of using 10 class B monitor points as we are, you could use five class A points by setting the AB jumper. You could also disable the last one, two, or three module points if those points on the card aren't being used and you wanna free up those addresses on the panel. From there, it's as simple as wiring each individual monitor point to the device it's monitoring on normally open contacts. In an application like this one, I recommend using a smaller gauge wire, such as 16 or 18 gauge THHN, rather than pulling a fire cable through the conduit. That will fill up the conduit less quickly and make for a cleaner install. For this first set of backflow preventer valve tampers, we're going to put them on the first monitoring point. We'll pull two yellow wires, since polarity doesn't matter on these, from the XP10 to the first valve tamper. 
Then we'll go back out of that tamper with another two yellow wires into the next tamper where the end of line resistor will land on the same terminals as the wire. The actual tampers aren't very easy to see in this drawing, but they're mounted horizontally at the top of the valve here. On this drawing, both tampers are drawn vertically with their covers off, with no flexible conduit going to them, but hopefully you get the idea. We're going to bring the first yellow wire into the tamper switch from the XP10 onto the common terminal. Then the second wire from the XP10 goes onto the normally open terminal. I always recommend metering these terminals before you start landing wires to ensure they were installed properly. It's also smart to check their alignment in the groove of the valve with a meter, as shown in the Potter video I mentioned earlier. Since we're going to put another valve on this same module, we're going to come out of each of these terminals with another wire and go to the next valve onto the same terminals, common and normally open. Then we'll put the end of line resistor that comes with the XP10 which is a 47 kilo ohm resistor across the same terminals. From the module's perspective, it really can't tell that there are any devices wired in at all. All it will see is the end of line resistor until one of these tampers is closed and its contacts change states. The module will then detect that there's a short and report that back to the panel as an active condition on that point. In this case, we'd program module one as a supervisory and label it something like basement pump room backflow valve tamper. Now we're going to look at a different style of valve tamper called a butterfly valve. The butterfly valves circled here on the fire pump bypass piping I've heard labeled different things. I've almost always heard them referred to as detector check valves, but recently I had an inspector make me change the labeling on these to pump bypass valves. While it's on the pump bypass piping, that doesn't seem like a good description to me. I'm curious to know what you guys typically call these. For this video, I'm going to refer to them here as detector check valves. Butterfly valves come with a bunch of wires sticking out of them that we wire into the fire alarm circuit. We usually install a small single gang handy box on the outside of these with a close nipple and make the splice to our fire alarm circuit in that box. Different manufacturers of these valves use different colored wire, so just like with the OS and Y valves, it's best to meter these first before making any connections. When the valve is in its open position, the yellow bar on the outside of the valve housing will be parallel with the sprinkler pipe. When the valve is shut, it will be perpendicular to the sprinkler pipe. Regardless of the manufacturer, these valves almost always come with two different sets of wires. The first set would have two of each color, though sometimes there are only two of the normally open pairs. In this case, we have two common, two normally open, and two normally closed. Then there's a set of auxiliary contacts that you could use for another purpose if desired, but they're usually just taped off inside the handy box. The green wire is always a ground connection. To find which contacts we need to use, we're going to meter the wires while we open and close the valve. Pay attention here to which color wire my meter leads are on and the position of the valve indicated by the yellow bar. With the valve open, meter across the two colors to look for your common and normally closed. Once you find that, one of those colors is common. Then shut the valve and you should have a short between your common and whatever color is normally open. There's also usually some diagram on the outside of the valve, but those are often labeled in the activated state. Your best bet is to use your meter. When you identify your common and normally open pairs, those are the wires you want to use. They're open when the valve is open and shorted when the valve is closed. In this case, red is our common and white is normally open. I should also note that while you're working on a brand new building, make sure you know the state of the sprinkler system before you start opening valves. You're not going to hurt anything by closing a valve that's open, but don't open any valves that are closed without permission from the sprinkler fitter. They may have some pipes opened on the line. You can also determine this by whether or not the pressure gauges are showing zero, but if you're not sure, don't open a closed valve. Now that we've identified our common and normally open wires as red and white, we can wire the valve into our module. Just like we did with the backflow tampers, we're going to put both of these valves on one monitoring point. So we're going to wire into the first one 
then back out of it into the second one where the resistor will go. We'll start by connecting one of the wires from the module to one of the white wires on the valve tamper, and the other wire from the module to one of the reds on the tamper. Then we'll come off of the other white wire from the first tamper and connect it to one of the white wires from the second tamper. Next we'll come off the other red from the first tamper up to one of the reds on the second tamper. Then we can put the end line resistor that comes with the module across the other red and white wires from the tamper. We'll then tape off the yellow wires from the tamper because those have continuity to common and will cause a ground fault if they ground out inside the box. We'll have to do that to the yellow wires on the first tamper switch as well. Now that we've seen how to wire up both types of valve tampers, we can continue on with the rest of the valves in the room. The next valve we have to wire in is the OS and Y pump suction valve. We'll use the next available point on the XP10 and wire it to common and normally open terminals on the tamper switch, same as before. The resistor will go right across the wires since this is the only device being monitored by this point. Now on to the pump discharge valve. We'll take a pair of purple wires, wire them into the next available point on the XP10, and wire them to the common and normally open white and red wires on the butterfly valve with the resistor on the other two red and white wires. Next is going to be the test header valve. This is a valve that's closed in its normal position as indicated by the yellow bar on the valve being perpendicular to the pipe. I would recommend metering these wires again. Don't just assume you'll wire it the opposite of the other butterfly valves because it's normally closed. These valves are often special valves that are designed to be closed. Code requires that a supervisory signal be sent within two and a half rotations of a valve. So if the fitter just put a regular valve in for the test header, the signal wouldn't be generated until the valve was almost all the way open. The test header valve will only be opened when a fire pump test is being performed. So once we've identified the colors of common and normally open, we can wire in from the next available module point to the XP10 to those wires, with the resistor going across the other two. I'm going to leave the remainder of the devices in the pump room for the next video. We'll get into the dry system shutoff valve, low air switch, and pressure switch, then the main riser valve and water flow switch, We'll see how the main riser water flow and dry system pressure switch trip the bell. Last, we'll look at how the fire pump conditions are tied in.